His name is James. He's, he likes he likes it a lot. We just waiting for some people to show up. Ah, yes. How is everybody doing out there? Just James checking in, and we are out here in Lake Forest, California, at Vatican Studios Creative Think Tank for Bishop Rotary, and we have our friends, Mr. David Vega, tattooing Jefe Mr. Franco. He good. He real good. Ooh-wee. You guys, you are in for a treat today. As we go over little tattoo questions, tips, tricks, and treats for you all at home. We're out here in Lake Forest, California. We want to know where you guys are checking in. But first, Franco, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I mean, how could I not be? I'm getting a tattoo by David Vega. I get to look and learn. And... Every now and then, I just kind of, I touch him. <laughs> <laughs> I just want some of that magic he has in his right hand. <laughs> hey, Chingon Tattoo Inc., how you doing, my man? Brother David Vega is using the shader wand with the regular battery. Let's ask him, like, why? Because a lot of people use Packer, some people use shader. David, what do you, how do you, you've tried the Packer as well, right? Yeah, the Packer's good, but uh, I like it for packing black, but I do so many layers. You do, I yeah. have to have a softer hand and I have to be able to go over the skin more. I have that and this one's perfect. Yeah. That's cool. That's what's perfect with the shader because you got that softer hitting motor, huh? Yeah, you could you could, you could could layer your, your shading without really damaging the skin. The Packer is, is just, is really matter of fact. Yes. It just puts it in there, right? Zooming in there. What are you running your wattage at? What's your volts right now? Right it's now? 8.6. I'm running at 8.5 to 9 volts. Okay. But this one is it's a softer um, piece. It's a child portrait, so I'll go a little, bit, a little bit lighter on it. We got people asking Franco about that grip that's right there. What can you say oh, about that grip? Yeah, you know what? Let me see. There's another one somewhere here. Here, we'll uh, we'll look around for that yeah, in a second. We, yeah, we um, we are doing a collaboration. Yeah, there we go. With uh, Tat Soul. So if you guys are familiar with the Wrath Gel Grip, oh man, this is really comfortable. The way it's like silicone. Um, so these are the samples. So David's using it for the first time. He's the only other person to use this besides me. Let's so these will be coming that. soon for the Wand Wrath Gel Grip uh, collaboration. What do you think so far? It's nice so far. It's super comfortable. Yeah, it's squishy. It's squishy. Really, really squishy. Dervon, how you doing, my man? I see you checking in there, Rebel Inc. Hope everything's going well, my dude. We got area code 702 checking in. We got Mexico City hanging out with us. We got Pittsburgh. Right, let's see. Florida. Oh, we got Australia in with us. Durango, Colorado. Durango. Weed, California. Weed, California? Really? Yeah. TL Chris is asking, uh, this is a question for David. A cool is it name. a little nerve-wracking tattooing, Franco? Of course. <laughs> I can't I don't, show it, though. I don't believe it. I don't believe it because if you see what he's done so far. Let's take a quick look at this. Let's take a quick look at this. It's not believable. So we're getting in there. We've got beautiful daughter, little Vivi here, capturing a moment in time. Yes, a moment in time. Everything in the world is just a memory, right? The only thing is the now. Brought to you by Deepak Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Franco, got a question from uh, Golabi Fafa asking, uh, please explain which machine from Bishop you would get for PMU. Um, I mean, I would recommend the Bishop PMU machine. Um, because it's really made for soft skin. That's what from the neck up soft skin. Mm -hmm. um, if you are going to get a Bishop machine, I would definitely recommend um, like a shader. Okay. Which is not too powerful because you're talking about eyelids, eyebrows, lips. I mean, the shader is pretty powerful. It's tr it's a trippy machine because if you pump up the voltage, um, it'll it'll lay it down. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's check in here. Get a little zoom in there. 
show them the good Let's stroke. see. Uh, Jay Flower from Puerto Rico is asking. Uh, he's got the Juan Packer and only uses that one for now. Wants to know if he can. How does he? Can he do bold lines with that? Oh heck yeah! Yeah, let's yeah get that definitely. In there. Yeah, you can use the Packer for pretty much as bold as you want to go. Um, we do sell a stainless steel grip that is mind blowing. Um, if you're looking for bold, bold lines, I would definitely suggest getting the stainless steel grip. Uh, the commentary we've been hearing is it's almost like a different machine because it makes the machine heavier. And so what that does is it makes the needles go into the skin more like butter, right? Because people don't realize this, but a machine tends to bounce up a little bit, bounce off the skin a little bit, minutely. That's kind of the whole draw with people aligning with coils. It's in reality, it's not so much the hit of a coil, mm -hmm. it's the fact that it weighs nine ounces, right? Mm -hmm. If you ever feel the hit of a coil, like if someone says, I have a nice coil that I use for lining, it has a bunch of give on it, right? So it's it's the weight of the machine that's really doing all the, all the pushing. So yeah, I suggest if you're looking for some fat lines, you can use a packer, but throw on that stainless steel grip, and you're gonna be so happy. <laughs> Mr. David, what is your drop system over here? Hey, we'll wait, let's I, pull out here and let's take a look here. Pull out, don't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drop system. I just use a gray wash set from Empire. And it's our Empire Inks, shout out Colt. Yep, a little, little, little cold, cold shout out, Empire Inks, smooth, black and gray. So how, when you get these set up though, how, which, uh, as far as your drops here, is it just uh, light, medium, dark, or is there... So that's just solid black, dark. Medium light, extra light now, put out an extra light and a light in case I need to uh, mix between the two. Okay. And where could they um, Where could they buy some um, some Empire Ink at? Uh, right now, uh, I think it's empireinks.com. Okay. Instagram, I think, has a link to it too. What do, what do you think of the ink so far? You've been using it for a couple of years now, I've right? I've been using it for ooh, going on maybe seven years. What do you think about it so oh, far? I love it so far. This is a ben. this is a commercial right here, so, so, so give it to him. What do you like most about Empire Ink? Um, it's, it gives it like a like almost like a silver tone. Mm. Feels really nice. It feels pretty accurate to uh, to the fresh part, fresh okay. uh, tattoo. Well, the proof is in the pudding. We've all seen your tattoos for a long time, and yeah, you've I think you've probably made a lot of people quit tattooing. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to, but then I have too many bills. <laughs> Let's see, so as we're getting zoomed in on there in the needles, which needle are you using, brother? Uh, right now it's uh, the Da Vinci 13 Curve Mag. Those are your go-tos? Uh, 13 and seven. Let's talk about that technique you're doing. So you're like a cross hatcher. Yeah, we got people asking about that. <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like in Let's a nutshell, zoom in, a let's of, zoom yeah, in over here. Really, really good let's get up over here. And, uh, damn, it's looking so good, man. So that's a, a cross hatch. Uh, real subtle crosshatch. I'm not kind of like creating tees. They're just real subtle changing the hands okay. and, movements. And, um, and I just build the tone slowly. Okay, and you definitely believe in going like making the plus sign and the, the asterisk sign. Is that how you achieve the smoothness? Sure. Yeah, I just keep uh, the more you crosshatch, the the smoother it starts to get. As long as you're not crosshatching in the same exact direction the entire time. Okay. Let's, wa let's watch them do some let's cross get up in there for everybody. All right, you guys, this is a treat. You guys are in class right now. We zo we're zooming in so you can actually see his technique. Um, but you guys can't tell anybody because this is, you know, worth at least a couple hundred grand. <laughs> Michael Bruno 393 is really loving his shader wand. We appreciate the support, my brother. Yeah, that's what that's, they want to see that right there. Yeah. Hope everything's well, Dervon. Sending you love out there to New York, my man. Uh, so these uh, disposable grips are asking, or are they auto? Can you autoclave the disposable grips? No, 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 they'll melt. Those are thrown away. Yeah. Rocky G Zings, how you doing, my man? Thanks for checking in. We got Clearwater, Houston, Arizona, Dallas, Sacramento, Los Angeles, Brazil, Jersey City, Chino, Costa Rica. Greetings from Compton. Mazer, how you doing, my man? Compton, California. Uh, hey. Vancouver, Brazil. Corey Allen, David is the man. Do you guys have any questions for David Vega? 
Um, he'll answer anything except for personal questions, unless it's his favorite food. <laughs> hey, David, what is your favorite food? Everything. Pe- people always ask, like, tattoo questions when they have, like, a favorite artist, but I, I bet you people want to know what you uh, eat. I like a good steak. Okay, okay. Are like there- Nusseret? Uh, yeah, <laughs> we all remember that one. Austin's probably got some good restaurants, I imagine. Yeah, we got a, a good amount of good restaurants. Uh, What's your favorite color? Favorite color? Black and gray? Black and gray. (laughs) Hold it. Actually, here's a great question for you both uh, from Nazareth Martinez. Could you explain the relationship between hand speed and machine power to create the smooth shading without overworking the skin? Hand speed? Okay, we call that the XYZ. Hand speed is... David's, David's, I, you, yeah, I got one. I think there's one thing that's kind of simple that people don't realize if you consistently uh, lubricate the skin, a lot of artists forget to do it every time. Um, <laughs> you'll uh, reduce a lot of that redness. Yeah. Yeah, keep keep it moisturized. <clears throat> but and there, it, and try not to dry wipe too much. No, no, no. And there really is a connection between the right hand speed and the right voltage because. To get that smooth shading, you have to have a rhythm. And uh, as I watch David tattoo, he has like a per- I would call it like a perfect rhythm, where it's you can't have your voltage too up, too too high, and have slow hand speed. That's too many punctures per minute. You can't have it too low and have you know low hand speed either, because then it's too little. Um, I think the right amount of ink also. If you don't put enough ink, you try to go too soft and you just create too much trauma to try to build that tone up. Yeah. I always say try experimenting with different volts, um, like, you know, 0.2 increments at a time with a certain hand speed and find out what works for you. Do a lot of testing. And then once you get that that perfect stroke and that perfect laying down of the ink, then just start memorizing that. Like, like I could confidently ask David, like, what he tattoos at, and it probably never wavers. Like, what, what's your normal voltage range? Nine. Okay. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, usually nine. Yeah. I won't change the, the voltage. I'll just change my hand speed. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's an important thing, what he just said right now. Like, changing, keeping the voltage, keeping your machine doing, doing its thing consistently, you can change your hand speed and direction and subconsciously you know, me- memorize what that change in hand speed does and it's just I think it takes the thinking out of it a little bit more right mm-hmm. Ooh, we got our sister Gianni checking in out there from Brazil but how I you hear. doing sister hope all is well she's coming down here with her parents pretty Ooh, soon awesome look forward to having you out here sending all our love out there to Brazil uh, let's see VXO39, I can't believe he's actually letting you film. Feels like I found gold. You did? <laughs> you know what? To, it, whoever said that is a wise man because this this is gold. To be able to watch David tattoo and ask him questions, like, he doesn't normally offer Ooh, this. Now we got the real question. Corona or Modelo, Dave? I don't dream. Even better. <laughs> Even better. But if you were on a beach in Mexico and you did drink, what would you uh, be holding? Dos Equis. There we go. Yes. Yeah, let's get over Because he's here. the most interesting tattoo artist in the world. I was born according to my kids. Oh, man. Not today. Not today. Let's get up in there. Look at that, guys. That's, a, that's called methodical tattooing right there. That's why he's... His tattoos look the way they do. Absolutely. Uh, what's your longest tattoo session you've ever had, David? I did um, almost 16 hours on um, my uh, business partner's uh, ribs. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got the statue. Oh, man. Finished it? Start to finish? No, we actually did another session of maybe four hours or oh, something. Oh, man. Wow. Actually, another question here from our friend Daniel DiBiase. What's the average time you spend on a portrait from the neck up? Um, from the neck up, I would say about seven hours. Okay. Depending on hair. It can really... I got a question for you guys. I always talk about this with David. 
Um, how important is patience to becoming a good tattoo artist? Oh, because ultimately, ultimately, you're a, you're a very patient tattoo artist. Yeah, it's extremely uh, important. I think it's hard to kind of keep that pace from beginning to end. Like, you know, when you first start tattooing, the first two, three, four hours, you know, you're kind of in your zone and you feel good. By your sixth, seventh, eight hour, your body's fatigued and clients tired and skin's irritated. So it's hard to kind of maintain that patience throughout. How do you do it? Like, what what, what could you share with the audience on, on your techniques? Uh, honestly, there's no trick. Um, I just kind of just take my time and I don't really look at the rest of the tattoo or what I have left to do. I just kind of concentrate on what's in front of me, what I'm tattooing. Um, and then eventually it's going to get done. Yeah, I find that too. Like when, when I'm doing like a portrait or something, I'll, I'll have my moments where I'll, I'll, I'll look around. I'm like, shit, I still have the hair, the left side of the face yeah. to do. I got to finish this and that. Yeah, we have my clients would do that. Like they'll see me tattooing, and they're like, oh man, I thought we had way more done. It's like, it's like, we still have <laughs> six hours left. Like, I could rush if you yeah. want. Yeah. But then it wouldn't be a David Vega tattoo. Actually, here's a good question for you both. Uh, do either of you use opaque grays? And if so, or if not, why? Man, I don't consider that black and gray tattooing in a, yeah. tra in a traditional sense. I, I consider it color tattooing because you're using the same techniques as you would if you were doing a color portrait okay you're, you're not really grazing the skin like this you're you're burying the skin getting it packed nothing in. wrong with it i'm just saying it's it's not really black and gray even mm -hmm. though it looks black and gray mm -hmm. yeah i feel like opaques you kind of have to saturate the skin more yeah it's just like color uh so it doesn't have the same look especially when it's healed you yeah. can't you, you really use this the the skin as a negative space as much it almost looks blue right yeah like a bluish gray uh, let's see here from Iconic Tattoo Studio. How does David handle skin that raises up really fast after the needle makes the puncture? Uh, so what I do is I kind of, if the skin starts to welt up really bad, I'll work on one big area. I'll kind of just block out a big area so there's no welt marks, and then I'll work within that area because if I start working in smaller areas, it welts up and then it creates uh, like a speed bump, and then you'll get gaps between your your, yeah, yeah, your yeah. shades. That's when that happens. It's, that's it's not. You fun. have to kind of wait. No. Yeah, you just have to wait it out. And uh, Urban Da Vinci's got a question. What lube do you use for the skin? You're using Purple Glide, right? Yep, I use uh, Purple Glide and CBD. There you go, guys. Inkies, CBD, and Purple Glide. But today we only have the Purple Glide out. Daniel Laronda, how you doing, my man? Hope everything's going well, buddy. Hope you and the family had a wonderful 4th of July. Uh, Rizzo Tattoos, do you guys ever add drops of white to your gray wash? I don't. No. I'm an all or nothing kind of guy. I feel like black and gray has to be just black pigment and water. If you start messing with adding white to it, um, nothing's wrong with it. Like I, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just a, it becomes a different style, mm -hmm. and that's just not how I grew up. <laughs> yeah. Kikoa, how you doing, my man? Got home safe, yeah. Aloha, Kikoa. You were in this chair last week. <laughs> yeah. My and turn now. Can't wait to get you back in here, brother. So Sufist. He is using, as far as the maggots, the 13, right? The 13 yes, curved? The 13 curved mag. 10, 10, 13. Bug pin 13? I, yep. Okay. He's a bug pin kind of guy. 1013CM, to be exact. Got Dominican Republic checking in. Ah, Sick Tattoos, glad you're enjoying this, man. He's just like, this is exactly right. This is a gift, you guys. Thank you very much. So, no, nah, thank you guys for tuning in at home, man. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys checking in. Remember, if we're giving away any techniques, it's not really anything until you apply it. So, you guys still have to do all the hard work. You know, like if he's giving you a jewel, he's dropping you some knowledge, you still have to go and put it into practice. So, I never look at it like this is free advice or whatnot. Like, you guys still have to do the hard work and uh, practice and 
go get on that client after hearing what David's talking about. Mm -hmm. Then if you really listen diligently, you'll be able to get better. I mean, we've seen that with the seminar. People were tattooing better overnight. Joseph, I mean, everybody was. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see, this is actually a good question for you guys. How do you do your stencil, and do you super saturate the picture before you stencil it out? Super saturated. Like, do you uh, do you do any adjustments? To, so here's the reference. Yeah, sometimes I will. Um, I can show them the stencil too. Just kind of break it down in shapes. I don't focus on any particular uh, parts of the body, like the lips or anything. Just everything's broken down into almost simple shapes. And how do you feel about stencils, Franco? Like when you're doing it, you because you always refer to it as a language. Like it's your roadmap, right? It's a roadmap to finding the treasure. And what is the treasure? You being happy with the tattoo when you're done with it, right? And the client basically achieving the goal. Um, like on a portrait, there is no, there is, there is an only one goal, and it's to make it look just like the picture. So if you have a good roadmap, and and there's different types of roadmaps, right? Like some say turn left twice and go right. And, you know, I might say turn left once, go, you know, different ways to get there. But, but the, the biggest thing is, is it has to have enough information, mm-hmm. right? Otherwise you get lost. Um, you want to have enough information on that stencil, but not too much. Otherwise you can get lost in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, this- I've seen people do really terrible portrait or really terrible stencils. And you can see that reflection in the actual tattoo. Mm. And they're capable of better. They're capable of doing more. But because their roadmap was weak, uh, so becomes the tattoo. It's just, again, it goes back to patience and how much time are you willing to put in uh, to your tattoos and your stencils um, to become good. Because everybody wants to become great, but they don't want to put in the work to do it. Everyone's looking for the easy road. But David over here, he's tattooing for eight hours. This seven eight. This might take seven eight hours, right? That's a long time. How mm-hmm. many of you guys are spending seven or eight hours on a portrait? And it's not that he tattoos slow either. Like if you look at his hand speed, it's it's the same as most of you guys out there. But he's doing more. He's seeing more. He's la- he's layering more intense. Deliberate with every stroke. Intentional strokes. Actually, here's a great question for both of you. What things do you wish you knew when you guys both started tattooing? <laughs> Mags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was tattooing. Uh, when I first started, I was doing portraits with uh, like 18 round shaders, the entire tattoo. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I would have to kind of curve it to get a line for the eyes. I think that's probably what taught me patience is having to tattoo with those. Dang, yeah, I, I could agree with that because yeah, I think you learn the best from your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, How about you, Hefe? Yeah, that's one for sure. <laughs> I used to do, I used to do everything with a single needle. I didn't know I didn't know other, any other needle existed for the first probably three or four years of my tattoo career. So you're doing full letters like fills. Doing block on... letters this big, it would be like <laughs> if I did somebody's name on their back or, or their neighborhood, it would be like okay on Wednesday I'll do one letter, and then like next week we'll do another letter. And then I would try to talk him into getting like a gradient fade, you know, because that could be done quicker. But mm-hmm. then every now and then you get people like, no, I want it all black. Like, oh, you? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, also, what, what, what do I wish I would have known when I first started tattooing? I wish I would have known how to save my money better. So all you guys making this fast cash, if you're not saving 20% of the money that you're making... Trust me, you will 100% regret it when you're in your 40s and 50s. So, save your freaking money. Yeah, save your money, get good credit, so that when it comes time for you to become an adult and settle down and have kids and a family, you can go and buy a house. Because tattooing will allow that lifestyle. Right. But not if you don't have a savings and not if you don't have good credit. X Coronado X is saying this is such an honor to be able to watch. You guys, it's an honor to allow us to be able to provide these kind of experiences for you. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when we get guys like our brother David Vega, who hasn't traveled at all since COVID, take the family out here for a little vacation and decided to stop by and visit us over here. 
and bless Hefe with a new tattoo. Mm-hmm. I love getting portraits, and I've gotten some really good artists like Bob Tyrell, Chewy Quintanar, and now I have a David Vega tattoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, here's a good one for you both. If you wanted to travel the world for inspiration, where would you guys both go? I think I know Franco's. David, you go first. Hmm. I think I would probably go back to Nepal. I was going to say, you, you guys were out there in the, uh, uh, were you out there in the earthquake year? No. That no. was Mick. Mick was telling us about uh, that. Yeah, we weren't out there that time, but yeah, Nepal was, it was beautiful. I loved going to if, India. If, if David was India too, yeah. If David was there during that earthquake, that earthquake would have never happened <laughs> because it's David. Like even Mother Nature knows to respect him. <laughs> you know? How about you, Franco? Where would you go for inspiration Italy. around the world? Yep, Italy. That's just where my roots are. I mean, there's inspiration everywhere, but I think Italy just there's. Could never get enough statue action, yeah. fine art action, and food action. Well, and I think what's also cool is when you get out there, you get the chance to go actually go take your own reference photos, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that's what, instead of using what Google has to offer, go out there and go find your own eye. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. Uh, Artism.ink, he is using the Tatsoul Bishop Gel Grip that we are working on that should be out soon, so stay tuned. Disposable grip. Brought to you by Tetzel and Bishop. (laughs) How long have we been on this one so far? Jacob Martinez is asking over here. I have no idea. I think we started about four, so we're about three and a half hours in or so. Mm -hmm. David, do you ever go single needle? No, I, I don't feel I ever have to. He's, he's, he's I've tried it before, but I feel like I can kind of do the same thing with a three. That 0803. He's buttery smooth. <laughs> you guys have any uh, letters by Freddy's asking, do you guys have any uh, recommendations to build up your stamina when tattooing, giving 100% effort over, let's just call it an eight hour period? Bagger's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) It's not just for other things. It'll make you tattoo all night. No. Uh, Yeah, get up and stretch. Do jumping jacks. Get the the blood flow. That's 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 what helps for me. David, how old were you when you first started tattooing? Uh, About 16 years ago. So bad at math. So mid 20s. Okay. How about you, Franco? What age were you when you started tattooing? 17. And this August will be 29 years of tattooing. Man, oh man. Do the math, you'll know how old I am. (laughs) Let's see here. What do you guys both see as common mistakes that artists make when they're tattooing portraits of babies or children? What are some of the things that you see? I think you guys are talking about, I mean, using the hair as a portrait as itself and being able, people always rushing through the, the hair. They maybe focus on the face. Like, what are, what are some of the things that you see are common mistakes? Uh, you know, uh, try to tattoo every detail they see. Sometimes you got to simplify it. Um, you have to do with, yeah, kid portraits, you have to simplify a lot let's of take it. a look at this real quick and that's and that's an important rule because that's even in the fine art world like if you look at any painting like even by caravaggio it's um up close it's just the right brush strokes but from far away it looks realistic because they've simplified it yeah you know like you don't want to tattoo every single eyelash like david said you want to just tattoo shapes ultimately that's kind of how you simplify it is if you break everything down in shapes that alone becomes simplified. And then when you apply that as a tattoo, that simplification makes it look more realistic. Old soul Mike, how you doing, buddy? Mike. Should have came by when you were here earlier, dude. <laughs> uh, let's see here, Lopez Tattoo. Question for Franco, is this your first thigh piece? Uh, it is. 
my first thigh piece. Creeping up the leg not, now, huh? Not, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> He's got a light hand. Let's see. Uh, Ice Slaughter's asking, how do you keep the ink from splattering once the needle hits the skin? Well, that's a good question. I've never really had that problem, but you can kind of uh, just kind of pop the... Quick dips? Uh, yeah. Some of the excess ink, or you can kind of just stab it. Yeah, I, th I think that's really the cause of it, is people suck up too much ink. Mm. I mean, on one hand, you have to dip a little bit more often, but... Especially the way David tattoos where, you know, he's cross-hatching, so you, you can't really have a bunch of ink bubble up on the skin. Oh, Sonella. Oh, Sonella. What's up, Sonella? Missing you, sister. Sonella. It hurt. This hurt. Hope you're doing well. Money Mac. How you doing, dude? Hey, I got your message. I'll get back to you after this live. I got you, buddy. Money Mac in the house tonight. Uh, Pokey McNeedles has a question for oh, David. Dude, I like that name. That's a great name. <laughs> great name, my friend. Uh, is the face all the same tone, or do you build up, or do you transition from your tones? What? I'll build up. Um, there's a lot of the same tones, especially with kid portraits, but I'll build up tones, and I'll even go back later and darken stuff if I need to. Oh, what's up, Mayo? Mayo. Hey. I've got that answer for you. I've got the uh, the code set up for you, buddy. So I'll send you a message after the live. Uh, good visiting you, Mayo. Yeah, it's such a great time having you out here, brother. Definitely looking forward to getting you back out here. His lettering game is sick. Mm -hmm. He's on a whole other level. Uh, Tommy Q Tattoos. The shader is a 3.5 stroke. With a little bit of a softer hitting motor, which allows for a little bit more more room to build up your tones without trauma to the skin. Uh, Big Dragon Inc. says, hey, Franco, it's me, Elliot, from Body and Mind. What's up, Elliot? Man, Body and Mind. Body and Mind is, one of, is the first professional tattoo studio I worked at in Huntington Park. A lot of people came out of that studio and just the Huntington, Huntington Park area. So what's up, Elliot? Good to hear from you, man. Always repping the body and mind days. That was where it all started, man. Body and mind. That was your first professional tattoo studio, right? Mm -hmm. That was in Hollywood Park? No, that was Huntington Park. Huntington Park, sorry. In the hood. I started out in the hood. What a beautiful place to start tattooing. <laughs> Iconic Tattoo actually has a question for you, Franco. What do you see with, where do you see the tattoo industry in 10 years? Hopefully advancing as much as any other industry. I, I would love to see it get more tech, technologically advanced. Um, it'd be nice to like go take a bathroom break and have the machine still doing the job. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine just like you program it to just be on autopilot, kind of like Tesla cars. Um, yeah, I'd like to see the smallest batteries last the longest amount of time. That would be cool. Maximize. And I would like to see some more healthy um, products come into the tattoo world because this is a pretty sedentary life. I don't think people understand, man. You're sitting. I mean, if you're sleeping seven to eight hours a day and then you're sitting seven to eight hours a day, that's, uh, that's a pretty sedentary life. So I, I hope there's more advancements you know be well, cool, huh, David? how do you feel yeah. yoga has actually worked for you i recommend yoga and any type of like core training you know as a tattoo artist if you're not doing that man it's your back's gonna be crying i mean i've been like i said i've been tattooing for 29 years so i've had back pain on and off for a long time and the only time it goes away is when i'm really taking like my yoga and uh planking serious because planking ain't easy. Shout out Sonella Yoga. Sonella Yoga, the one and only. Let's see here. Beloved one, he is using the his ink set from Empire Inks. Shout out, Colt. Hope you're doing well, brother. Spooks Tattoo, how you doing, my man? Yep, he's using the Empire Inks set.
yes, we will get in there in the eyes and get all up in there for you guys at home here. Let's get in there. Sorry, we're getting super zoomed in so we can get that for you guys there. Uh, we got somebody asking about that. Uh, is that an engraved Rolex on your hand, Franco? You know what? Yeah, but it's fake. It's a fake one. It's a fake Rolex, but the engraving is done by Mark Duff, and that's real. Yep. You know, the fake ones were cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I, I let's I see. It, I think I got it for like 300 and that, I just thought, like, if I engrave it, people <laughs> will think it's real. But then here I am telling on myself, it's, it's a fake Rolex, and um, <laughs> but the engraving is real. Shout out to Mark Up, our one and only. That man does some amazing work. On those bishop machines and yes stay tuned we will be having some marked up power wands coming soon along with some el chapo power wands let's get up in there in the eyes this is like that classic song you hear when you get off the airplane at, a, at an island right <laughs> 96 degrees in the shade What's the stencil product that you use mostly, David? Uh, just stencil stuff. No, no. What do you guys... Actually, this is a great question for both of you. What do you guys do when you have the client who bleeds a lot? You kick them out. Tell them to come <laughs> back another day. Don't drink too much the night before. No. <laughs> uh, honestly, um, we just kill them and then they stop bleeding and then we bring them back to life when we're done. <laughs> you ever tried that technique, David? Never tried that shit. Yeah. It's, Try it's, next it's not for everybody, but it only sucks when like they can't get resuscitated. <laughs> What's so going on, CB top. Sacred Oath? How you doing, my man? Hope all is well. Sending nothing but the best to you. I still, I owe my honest answer though, but the real thing is when they bleed a lot, I'll use um, like a well, actually, I, that's what I like about the CBD glide. It kind of helps with that and the redness. Kind of brings it down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then just kind of wait. It's like a waiting game. The tattoo session goes from three hours to six hours. <laughs> uh, David, is there an amount of time that you like to limit your breaks while you're tattooing? Yeah, no longer than like 10, 20 minutes. Unless it's like a lunch break. We got a question from Mr. J Create. Joseph, great question here. What Does David, doing? do you ever notice a difference in skin irritation when using the hemp glide versus the, or the hemp ointment over the purple ointment or any other ointments? Do you notice any uh, redness or inflammation reduction? No, but I'll use it if I am getting a good amount of redness or swelling. It helps. So people can use that as aftercare, right, Franco? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll give you a little uh, a little hack. So if greatest you, if, hack for artists. This is this is the real deal too. If you try it, you'll it's, it's something you'll feel. Rub a bunch of the hemp glide on your hands, right, for about a minute. Then put your gloves on and then tattoo, you'll feel your fingers and just they'll kind of like lighten up a little bit. If you have a little bit of arthritis or just achy fingers, that virtually disappears. So instead of waiting, you know, cause most people wait after eight hours after the tattoo session, you're actually being proactive instead of reactive mm -hmm. by getting it into the bloodstream, right? It's just your hands feel high. It's it, they yeah. feel brand new every time. Yeah, that's a, that's a hack right there. So definitely try that. We got somebody asking if they can take another look at the stencil, if you have a second. Yeah. They wanted to see how you map it out. Let's see here. Let's get in there for you guys. <laughs> There's his road map, and this is where we currently are at the moment. Let's take a quick look in here. Mm -hmm. Again, David, thank you for your patience, my brother. Are you doing like most of that with like, the, the, 80, the 803? Or the bag, though? The, uh, most of it is with the 7. Okay, cool. 
butt uh, that butt parallel joint style. Yeah, because if I do it with the liner too much, it becomes too, too sharp. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with that. I Frank. think it's a mistake a lot of people make actually thinking that they have to do everything with a three tight or a single needle. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, uh, J Flower PR Puerto Rico is asking, uh, what do you think about the pepper shading with the three round liners? I think it's a cool technique for sure. I mean, we got one of the we got two of the best out here. <laughs> yeah, we probably have two of the originator the originators. Um, day, you know, we got Alex Sorsa and we have Mr. Trojan here. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's brilliant work for sure. I mean, it's, the trick is, is to get it as smooth as you can. So it's not just peppery work, it's smooth pepper. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not easy to do, but you know, if you cross ads a lot and you use the right shades, you could definitely do some nice stuff. I just trip out on how they do big back pieces with the three rounds. That's, I, that's talk about patience. And, and they're pretty quick. Like, your average tattoo artist that tries to do a three-round liner tattoo will take them three, four times as long as it does these guys because that's all they do every day. Yeah. I mean, you know, it makes buying needles easier. Just give me the three-round liners, maybe a five-round liner. David, how do you make the stencil last so long even though your hand's resting on the tattoo? Question from Julie V. Uh, I don't know. It just does. <laughs> and it just works. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta put it on properly. You gotta put it on. You have to make sure you alcohol the skin to take away all the oil, because that's what that's yeah, one of the things that makes it like fall off. So wipe the skin off really good with alcohol, and then when you put the stencil on, you gotta press a napkin on it a little bit, and maybe once or twice. Yeah. Okay. Get as much oil off as you can. Yeah, and then if if it's a technical tattoo like this. Honestly, I would let them dry it. I would let them walk around for 15, 20 minutes before you start. And I'm not really putting my hand all the way on the stencil. I'm kind of like cupping the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I won't grab too much of it. Yep. Yep, so it, it might look like he's, you know, putting heavy hands on the stencil, but he's... I can even feel he's going around it. Uh, and you're running uh, just to you got a couple more questions here on the voltage. You're running at about what eight five nine right uh, now? Eight six today. You okay, it's around eight five or eight nine. Since my thighs are so creamy, <laughs> you lowered it a little bit. Actually, yeah, I have to make sure it doesn't. <laughs> Tattoo and Franco, I can't mess up. <laughs> Dang, man, this is this is perfection right here. I have a feeling I'm gonna be staring at this piece a lot. Getting your techniques, David. You don't mind if I take a couple of your techniques? Nope. I took cool. a lot of yours. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> From the old yeah. video back in the day. That Only video, right. Man, that video. And that video is available on YouTube. <laughs> For free, 90 free. Sometimes I see that video. And I'm like, damn, that was a long time ago. I didn't have any gray hair. None. We got a lot of people saying you you get you hit it right on the head with uh, as far as advice for tattoos and saving money. I got a lot of people commenting on that. Like that's because that's we, the key. We all know that tattoo artists are stupid with money, me included, right? We all know that because we get fast money and we it disappears fast. It'll come back, right? If you bang a tattoo, well, not no, it'll <laughs> never come back. That's the thing. Once you spend a thousand bucks, you'll never get that thousand bucks back, um, unless it's on real estate. Then you'll get more. <laughs> but yeah, save your money. I, I think back in the days, like you know, I, like I said, I've been tattooing for almost thirty years. If I would have saved even five percent of the money I made, you know, from the beginning, whew, I'd have millions just sitting in the bank just from savings. So, with the interest, yeah, just save money. Don't spend it all. It's not the cool thing to do. Um, quit buying crazy lavish stuff unless you can afford it. Save your money. Get a house. And I mean, tattoo artists have probably one of the best chances at home ownership than most industries. I know doctors and lawyers that don't rent, that don't don't own homes. David Vega is a legend. Hope you're having a great trip, brother. Nice Thank hat, you. Young Gloves says. Oh, what's up, Carlos? He works out. He works there too. There. Oh, at your studio? Mm-hmm. Who? How many artists do you have working with? So we have. Um, me, Trent, Carlos, and um, and Oscar. Is it cute? 
<laughs> Who said that? Tom, was that you? Nope. <laughs> uh, Wallows Inc. has a question for David. Did you go to school for art or are you self-taught? Uh, We've self- had this conversation. Self-taught tattoo, but I went to Academy of Art in San Francisco. Because you were going to do, uh, you were doing character design. I mean, that kind of yeah. worked out with your your uh, your piece for your uh, signature series, yeah. right? Yep. What got you into tattooing? I was just trying to make extra money in college. I was actually going to start, uh, I started to do traditional because I really like traditional. And I just, I'd love to see a traditional tattoo you did. I bet you it was smooth. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have some pretty bad tattoos out there. What was the one thing that you did that was like a light bulb switch? Because I I imagine like you went from doing, like you said, terrible traditional tattoos to like your first smooth black and gray. Like what happened? How'd that happen? Um, I think when I first started tattooing, I thought it would, um, you know, be a quick uh, process and do it pretty quick like you do on paper. You kind of sketch it in there and Mm -hmm. adjust it, but... And I just slowed down and really paid attention to almost every stroke that I do. Let's take a look at this here. There we go. Let's get in there. I'm you want me to flex? <laughs> <laughs> That is looking amazing. Amazing. So when you were in the eye, were you just using uh, just the round liner, or were you actually getting in there with the curved mag as well up no, there? No, I used the liner for some of the eyelashes and um, and some of the blacks, but for the most part, it's all a seven mag. Let's see. Uh, Fear of God Tattoo has a good question for you both, actually. What advice do you have for someone that wants to open their own shop? Don't do it. I'm just kidding, kind of. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kind of. What's your What's your answer to that, David? Well, I mean, if, if you want a bunch of artists, be prepared to <clears throat> babysit. <laughs> but if you're going to do it on your own, I mean, it's difficult, but it's worth it. If you do it right yeah there's there there's a recipe because there's so many shops nowadays so it's kind of like you know opening up another pizza place in new york right it's like there's too many already right so mm-hmm. so it becomes uh and this is advice from some of the people i look up to like gary v and uh, other um, guys online if you're gonna do it you have to do it better than anyone else and that's the only way that you're gonna stand out so if you're gonna do it the same or less you'll lose money and you'll end up you know sinking your 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 savings into a shop that shuts down in a year and we've seen that happen a lot yeah um so yeah if you're gonna do it you got to do it right you got to do it better than the other person because tattoo artists nowadays you know that are paying rent or want to work out of a studio they want a really cool environment so if you're not providing them a cool environment they're going to work somewhere else right because an artist can work anywhere for the most part he could rent like a like a like a two hundred square foot room and deck it out and his customers won't complain. Shoot, I used to do that about twenty years ago. I rented out a room that was probably hundred and fifty square feet and it was like a bedroom kind of, right? In an office building. And it worked, right? But if you're building a shop to make money, because that's that's ultimately the goal, man, you gotta spend a lot of money on the shop to make a lot of money. If you build it, they will come. Mm-hmm. If not, it's going to be a difficult ride. Uh, Brandon McKeever, currently he is using the shader wand with the regular, sorry, sorry, the shader power wand with the regular battery. Uh, Moser 310, Franco spitting them facts about savings. The reason why I chose Bishop Products is because he takes care of the tattoo community. And to David, I always use your signature inks and support you as well, my brother. Thank, Thank you. you for that, oh, dude. Appreciate that, my man. And that's why we do stuff like this. We, we believe in giving back to the community. Um, not because we have to, but because we actually want to. It's fun. I like to see people reach the maximum potential. I feel like if we can use our platform to help people you know, reach their, their top performance and 
become the best artists that they could be and businessmen and you know all that stuff mm -hmm. if we could be a, if we could play a small part in that man that's that's a reward in itself so yeah we're, we're we'll always share our knowledge we'll always you know interview guys like david vega when we get a chance for you guys to learn so just listen to what we're saying that's all i ask listen to it i wish somebody would have told me these things 20 30 years ago like save your money <laughs> franco have you ever thought about voice activated wands maybe a possibility in the future i'm all about tech it'd be like really cool to say 8.6 engage 8.7 engage that'd be cool that'd be nice i mean that technology exists it's already here. I mean, Alexa. Look at, look at Alexa, yeah. Yeah. Power wand. Give me more juice. Power wand. Give me less tension. More torque. Okay, what? David Vega, how much more torque do you want? <laughs> 0.2% millinewton meters. Uh, he's using the long taper uh, needles. And Franco, do you know what the, the length is on the taper on those needles? Or is... um, It's a good five, six millimeters. Uh, what am I saying? No. It all depends. On the bug pin needles, they already have a taper. It's a smaller diameter. So, um, you know, you can get away with less millimeters, four or five, because it's already a smaller diameter. Versus you want that same taper, it'd be six, seven millimeters on a 12 or a 14 gauge needle. Got it. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the rule of thumb is like at, at an eight, which I don't really use, but some people use bug pin eight, it, they're already long tapers at that point. Mm -hmm. A short tapered bug pin eight is a long taper. Tora Shelley Art has a question. That's David Vega. I've never seen his face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this beautiful mug right here, right here. This is the man <laughs> behind the beautiful portraits. He's fine. <laughs> Where it says I, they thought I'd be a lot taller when I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be a lot smaller. <laughs> well, it, granted, you're sitting down, but when he stands up, <laughs> he's a big, tall bear. Yeah, eight foot tall. Got a question here, Franco. Uh, B Inc. is asking, could you please make an all-in-one adjustable stroke? And what do you feel about that as... Oh, as... Uh, they're gimmicks, I'm telling you. I mean, yeah, you could tattoo with them, but the philosophy of, of Bishop is only the best. So I'm a fan of using, and, and this is a perfect example of why we can't do that. Um, we believe in having a couple different motors. So this motor has um, less torque. It's less strong than like the Packer motor. So less torque with a 3.5 stroke is, is why David loves this machine. And what the, it allows you to do is layer your shading without doing too much trauma to the skin. If he was using the Packer, which is a 4.2 and a stronger motor, he wouldn't be able to do this. He would have to make quicker decisions and it, and it would not be a David Vega tattoo. Because mm. David Vega's tattoos are heavily layered and that's how he gets that smooth, creamy transition. In, in, right? So, so you have a machine that has one motor, okay? So automatically now you're saying that's the torque that's gonna belong to a 3.5, 4.2, and then maybe a five and maybe a 2.5. So, um, you're automatically missing what this machine has, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can't just have different strokes. The motor torque and the motor RPM is also a huge factor. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like a lot of people will use this machine and, and it works better than other machines sometimes because we take the time to think about those little combinations. It's kind of like, you know, white wine with seafood, red wine with meat, you gotta pair things. And the way I, that we do, you know, I shouldn't be giving up this much facts, but we pair the stroke with the right motor. And that's how you get the magic. Believe me, I wish we could do that. It would make life easier. But like you said, you can say it, they got to do it. Maybe in the future, if they have motors that you can kind of toggle and, and t turn down the torque, that would be cool. Give me five or ten years on that one, buddy. <laughs> Monocora Inc. He is currently using a prototype of a Tat Soul Bishop wand grip. It's the it's the Wrath gel. Wrath gel grip for the wand. 
Um, hopefully it'll be ready in the next month or two. I was going to say, is there kind of it's, a timeline? It's, it's my favorite grip right now, for sure. It just feels really squishy and secure. It's got, it's like, it's got like grip patterns on it. <laughs> Let's see here. Sometimes David just like just like hot. <laughs> so silly, I knew it was that part. <laughs> that black meeting the, the cheek. What are you guys Same. up to out there in Bishop Land all across the world? Oh, we got somebody asking, have you tried to make an 0809 curved mag? Oh, eight, oh, what are the nine. thoughts on thinner pins? Oh, eight, yeah, so... The we have an 0805 we're working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the 08 needle is, is a little bit more flimsy. We use, a, we use a 304 stainless steel. It's a lot harder than 316. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helps. Um, Let's take a quick look here. Oh, you know, I would, if, you're doing, if you're doing like a two-hour tattoo, three-hour tattoo, yeah. But if you're doing like six- or eight-hour tattoo, I would... I would grab a new one halfway through. Got it. Because at that bug pin eight, bug pin six diameter, mm -hmm. you start to lose integrity. Uh, you know. All right, here's a good one for both of you. Letters by Freddie. Funniest tattoo story. Franco, you got 29 years of them. Mm. Almost every day. <laughs> a funny, a funny tattoo story, or uh, David, you go first. What is I don't have any real funny ones. Okay, I have a guy fart on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. Oh that's shit! Funny. Literally. Well, I, I guess I've, I've had that a few times, but this guy was like nonstop. Oh, <laughs> no. a little different. Now my question to you is: Did they smell? Was it like a stinky one, I don't or think like he cared? He didn't care. Nah, he just what, just what, going. what about you? Was it a stinky? Uh. Like was it like no, a, I could hear. Was it, it like protein shake status or? <laughs> nah, I don't know what it was, but were they like little vegan? Farts? It was all sound. <laughs> no, no, bite. no bite. All sound, no bite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the quiet ones, the deadly ones. Yeah, you're like, where did that skunk come from? Me, I can't think of a funny story. I tattooed Suge Knight, and he told me everything about him and Tupac. So that wasn't really funny, but it was cool. <laughs> no, but what was funny was the fact that all that kept playing the entire night was Biggie mm, Station. That's a true story. <laughs> I thought God was playing a trick on me. Talk about the irony in that one. Yeah. Not too many funny tattoo stories. What am I, funny? Like a clown on my head to amuse you? <laughs> what am I? What am I, a clown? Uh, we got what people. Movie is that? What movie is that? Goodfellas. We got people praising from uh, the DVD that you once did a long time ago that we decided to release over COVID. Was that not? That was such a great idea, just because everybody was, just the world was in chaos yeah. at that time, and nobody kind of knew what was going on. And you know, just as we were doing the quarantine conversations, just wanted yeah. to reconnect with the industry. And that was, shout out to my brother-in-law, David. Yep. That was his idea. He works on our social media, David and Homer. And, you know, we were still selling the DVD, so we were making money off of it still. And he thought it would be a good idea to give away a free gift to the community. And um, I agreed with him. I was like, you know what? Yeah, well, you know, we've sold this DVD for 10 years or more. Maybe, maybe even 15. Gosh, mm -hmm. now it's been a while. So yeah, we gave it away for free, and thank you guys that have watched it. It's got over a million views, partially because I'm cute. <laughs> Not right now, but in the video. <laughs> what do you think, David? Am I cuter now or That's why back I watched in the video? It. That's why I watched are you it. The, are you into the gray hair? Yeah, yeah it's like, like fine wine, man. David, what do you think? Dave, <laughs> what do you think about the, the gray, the pepper beard? Can we, we, much can we talk about that for a minute? Okay. <laughs> this is Dapper Dave, everybody. Dapper Dave. Data Collector Dave. He's single and he's willing to mingle. So if you're single out there, um, you could uh, get his Instagram from James <laughs> later on. 
You said you wanted a reference. We got plenty of them out there. We got plenty of references <laughs> out there. He's looking, for a, he's looking for a good girl. So if you're out there and they do exist, uh, hit them up and hit them down and hit them all around. Let's see here, uh, Moser three ten's got another really good question here. Uh, when changing from soft to dark wash, do you use a rinse cup? Do you clear out the dark wash or do you just carry it over? Uh, I just just kind of empty the ink in here. Okay. Can you tell. Uh, the buildup is immaculate that you have beautiful work. Yeah, you. David Vega turned me on to bishops. Thank you, tattoos by David Dutch. David Vega just turned me on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, we gotta have fun here sometimes. If you're a tattoo artist and you're not cracking jokes and polishing up that personality, man, you have to do that. That's part of being successful. Like, you gotta get people to come back to you not because you're good, but because you made them laugh. Um, it's all about the experience, right? Yeah, it is. A lot of people don't realize that. So David, he'll have anyone coming back. Potter, what's up, dude? How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Ah, oh, Gigi's on here. Gianna. I see you, Gigi. Gianna. Christopher Lee, what's up, buddy? Hope you're doing well, bud. Hey, again, guys, we are out here in Lake Forest, California, and checking in with you guys here, Vatican Studios, Bishop HQ. Uh, let's tell you what, guys, we're going to have we're gonna, a couple more questions here, and then we're going to let these gentlemen get back to the grind. But Let's see what we got here. Let's get up in there for you. Any other questions for David? Franco, got any tattoo machines? Questions, any product questions? You know, we are hoping to get back out out there on the road. I know uh, for those of you, the Villain Arts Show down in San Diego, coming up in August, we will be down there with our Tat Soul family. And then we've got Inked Magazine presents Golden State Tattoo Expo in September which will be absolutely amazing. Thank you to all our friends over there, Inked and Mr. Carlos Torres. Let's see here. Ooh, Tommy Q's got a great question. Franco, where did the name Bishop come from? Well, that's a pretty cool story, actually. The word Bishop came from my last name. So Viscovi in Italian means Bishop in English. So the, the machine company is named after me, but nobody knows it until now. Now you guys know. <laughs> Who gave you that name? Uh, I got that name from Sick Jack and from Cycle Realm. He, uh, over some tequila, he thought it would be a cool idea to name the machine company after my name, and I didn't want to do that. So then he asked me what my, my name means in English. Because everybody's name's got a meaning, right? Like, what does Vega mean in English? I don't know. Dope as fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. That's a, that's what a clean is, translation. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. Ray, like, Ray, like Ray, a king. Reina, queen. So, um, yeah, this, I, I looked at him and I was like, you know what's funny? Because my mother used to always tell me that my last name means bishop. And she loved that. And so, I'm like, it's bishop. And then we looked at each other like, like the aha moment. And then that was it. It was the birth of the name Bishop. Vega means a fertile meadow. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does have five kids. Oh, he, he does, does have five, five kids. kids. He so, does have five kids. Pretty accurate. A large plain or valley, typically a fertile or grassy one. Yeah, he's fertile <laughs> AF. Data Dave, with that info, single ladies, he's available. He's References got, only. He's got more data than a computer. <laughs> uh, I owe that one to Google. <laughs> Thanks, Google. Google for the win. Hey, Southpaw. What's up, Zach? What up, Zach? How you doing, buddy? I got a, We got a chat. I missed your call. Be a good time to get me in the chair now. I'm not going anywhere for a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. El Conrado Marquez. Uh, he is currently using the... 
shader power wand with the regular battery pack. Let's see here. Can't wait to pick up a wand. Tsunami Wisp, it, we got them available. Call me after you. Uh, let's see here. What do you think, Angelo? Tattoo Manu, hey, thank you, brother. Thank you for tuning in, you guys. Thank you to all you guys at home for checking in, answering some questions. We want to do what we can. You guys do so much for us, and we just want to make sure we can give back to you guys with some tips, tricks, treats. Get our... Uh, Get a, when we get our Bishop family members out here, we want to make sure we give you guys an opportunity to ask them yeah, the well, questions. Yeah, but, yeah, we'll see. Whether tattoo, whether about life, you name it. Free advice about business, class, seats in an airplane. Take it if you can. Uh, Ramon Rene Garcia is asking Franco, uh, for someone starting out, which wand would you recommend? Um, if you like to do, if you're one of those people that like to do everything with one machine, kind of, I would go Packer, which you could do lining and shading and color packing. If you like specifically want to do very soft and realistic black and gray, I would get a shader. Just I don't like recommend the liner unless, um, like you're one of those people that cannot line with a rotary. And even then I wouldn't recommend shading with the liner. Just use it for lining. Nor Inks says David Vega is a damn unicorn. Yes. We Twitter confirmed that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's out there. There's only one David Vega. That is true. In this room. <laughs> and the world. <laughs> Floors Tattoo, thank you for uh, thank you for supporting us, man. Yeah, we always appreciate the love and, and the kind words. We always want to make sure we're giving back to the community. Isaac Tattoos. David, are you Mexican? I'm half Mexican, half Puerto Rican. That explains the chiseled beard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh... Laisha, the artist, hello from Houston. All of us from RS3 Studios, love and support Bishop and David and all of your products. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We appreciate you too. Without all of your guys' love and support, we couldn't do what we do. Nope. Um... Is there a way to be able to 3D someone's scars. All right, can you go over yeah. scars, Franco? Yeah, you can do like a centipede, millipede, something like that. <laughs> um, you gotta get creative, but it's mm -hmm. possible. I, mean, I, like, I like looking at stuff like that. Uh, do you feel motors with slower RPMs are better for black and gray realism? Mm. Not necessarily because you can control the RPM by adjusting your voltage down, right? Mm -hmm. The trick is, is what the torque, what is the torque at, at seven volts, six volts, five volts? That's the sweet spot. So it's not so much that question as it is, where does the torque land at what RPM? For example, there's motors out there that spin super slow, like, you know, two or 3000 RPM and they have way too much torque. Yeah. Or not enough. So, all the motors that we have, we, we custom made. They're, they're not off the shelf motors. We custom designed them from the RPM to the torque. And that's, that's what we did. Uh, let's see here. Osorio Tattoo is asking, are, do we plan on making a two inch stainless steel grip for the wand? I mean, that two inch aluminum grip is heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing's got some weight to it. I, I don't. I really don't even think you would want that. Like two inches, that's a lot of stainless steel. I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of steel. I mean, you you don't want to accidentally drop that machine on the skin. It'll 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 kill them. Yeah. <laughs> Only if it's a jugular tattoo. If that is. <laughs> Let me see. Bring, bring that up top. Yeah. See. Look at this. Come on. Look. Imagine this thing made of steel. The aluminum, the aluminum one that we have is heavy enough. This would be like illegal. It'd be like a brass knuckle. <laughs> Become a weapon, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Christopher. The, the rubber one's heavy, man. Christopher Hedgelin. Uh, love the work. Love the machines. Turn my mentor onto Bishop Machines. We all love them. Thank you for the great products and the info. Forever support and love. Thank you very much. We'll Thank keep, you, Christopher. We'll keep, much appreciated. We'll keep it coming. I think Gigi and Emily are waiting to come up here to come check it out. They're patiently watching on the live right now. Oh, they don't have to wait. You guys can come on up. Come on, G. Come on, Emmers. Come on. <laughs> Tattoos by Dutch. You're just committed to the game, my friend. He said, I'm on vacation and I'm watching tattoo videos. My wife thinks I'm addicted to work now. <laughs> I mean, David's getting a break from his vacation at this moment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is my vacation. Uh, all in tattoo. What's up, Detroit? We've got a Rand checking in. Uh, let's see here. El Conrad Marquez. Uh, that is our power wand. So it's our all in one machine battery built in. That is our collaboration machine we did with Critical. <clears throat> Shout out to Critical Power Supply. <laughs> uh, Artism Inc. Man, this seminar none of us asked for is absolutely amazing, and I'm getting so many gems from this. This is exactly why we do this, my friend. Now just go and do the hard work and put this into practice. Right? Well, guys, is there anything else you got out there? Franco, you guys got any questions for anybody? Or? Gosh, uh, I'm just glad you guys tuned in. Absolutely. Uh, we, we do this stuff for you guys. We want to bring more knowledge and wisdom to you guys as tattoo artists. And remember, save 20% of the money you make. Not a penny less. What you save, save in the front end. Save on the Starbucks or on the expensive Louis Vuitton belts or whatever you're doing. See, he's using, uh, let's see here, Javier Palos. He is Come using through. the Come Tatsol uh, Bishop Grip. That It's the Wraith Gel Grip that we're working on. Oh, he said Wraith. Somebody's got to throw out some money. Wraith. Whoa, sorry. Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Money, money, y'all. And we got our sister Letitia in the house coming to check out everything. We're just going live out here. I finally got time to come over. Yeah. This is some action right here. Look at this. Well, hey, guys. We are going to dip out here. Want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Again, anybody looking? Dave right here. Single. Ready. References and referrals only. Yeah, Brother David Vega, always appreciate you coming out here, man. So good to see you. It's been too damn long since we've gotten you back out here in California. Thank you. And Jefe, as always, thanks to you. Thank, Thank you, you for everything that you do for the industry. Thank you for providing all of us with the most amazing products. This information, Bishop Rotary, everything about it, you guys. Thank you, guys. We do what we can for you guys at home because without you, there is no Bishop Rotary. And for that, we are eternally grateful. That's a true story. And on that note, hope everybody has a wonderful evening. Stay safe out there. And remember, if nobody loves you, Bishop and Chuko's got you. Yes, that's true. And we out. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> that was that was long. <laughs> just, uh, just going, dude. Go, go. Hey, just holding a phone for that long, like we were, we, dude. It it was steady rising. We were at like four hundred consistently. That's pretty good. Like, I did uh, I did animation and I did uh, figure drawing out there. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah.